everybody. This is our stand-up meeting for the uh, 3rd of October, 2023. And what we do here is we talk about what we did over the past week, what we're going to be doing over the next week. If we need any resources or if we have any roadblocks, anything that's blocking our, our way. Um, and I'll I'll hand it off to, to James first uh, so he can talk to us about uh, anything he has going on. Thanks, Michelle. Um, my mic set appropriately. Uh, thanks, Michelle. I'm James Kilo Juliet Seven Kilo Delta Echo over here at Mud Lab South. Uh, recently, we've finished some work on the environmental control systems around uh, where the lab is going to be deployed. We're hoping that we fixed an issue that we've had there. We're going to be double checking that over this next week and making sure that all is good there before we move on to our next steps. But we're doing well otherwise. Okay. Uh, I was expecting a schedule uh, in writing. Is there is that coming? Uh, we don't have a full schedule in writing yet. Uh, both me and Keith are on the busier ends, but we, uh, I can talk to him about that, and we'll see about potentially getting something like that to you. Okay, that would be good. It was expected about a week and a half ago, so it'd be be good to hear if there's a schedule and a plan so that we can figure out what to do moving forward. Thank you. All right, Ken, off to you. You've been been researching and reading up and, and getting familiar with polyphase. Yeah. Um, still reading Fred Harris's book. I moved on through chapters one through three, started chapter six, which is specifically polyphase. And just, uh, trying to understand what's what's going on there that's pretty much uh yeah i think by the end of uh this week i should have a better understanding of why it's central to the uh design that we're looking at okay really good and the the code base that we're that we're looking to to leverage is called thesius cores it's a polyphase channelizer, uh, but also does synthesis too. So it does it in both directions. It creates a channel or or channelizes, a, you know, can be used in transmit or receive. So for those that would like to to pitch in or following along, this is uh, you know, getting up to speed with what a with polyphase and multi-rate processing and then to be able to use the uh, existing open source Thesius cores code base in the receiver of the uh, Hyferia project so our big transponder so thank you thank you very much ken is there anything that you need or any roadblocks that you've had no nope. okay cool all right all right what about you paul hello um i've not been working on anything directly fpga related this week i did make some changes uh, or a minor maintenance effort and on the remote lab that chaco cat and karapi are our two principal virtual machines are pinned on Ubuntu version 18.04 because that's what's compatible with the tools we're running. It won't be that way for the foreseeable future. 18.04 is past its primary maintenance period. So they're not updating all the applications and packages that are installed unless you subscribe to a service called Ubuntu Pro, which is, uh, as far as I can tell, is a, a blatant cash grab as a way to get people to pay for for doing maintenance on packages that really need to be under maintenance. Um, the good news is that they'll give it to you for free up to about five uh, machines if you're a personal user. Uh, ra rising up to 50 machines if you're some kind of contributor to Ubuntu. Uh, you can also pay for it if you want a bigger installation or if you're not a personal user. I went ahead and um, and signed up as a personal user and assigned two of my five machines to Chaco Cat and Karapi. So they are now getting the Ubuntu Pro level updates. Uh, there were a lot of backlogged updates. So a lot of packages have changed over the last week or so since I did this. And uh, hopefully they will cause no problems. But if anything weird starts to happen that you can't explain, uh, maybe that's why. Let me know if that does happen. Otherwise, pressing forward on miscellaneous stuff. Wow, thank you. Yeah, that's kind of a lot. Uh, definitely appreciated. I think the the one thing that I know for sure that's kind of odd about uh, Karapi in particular 
is Karapi is the virtual machine where we have MATLAB and Simulink, our startup license is installed there, which means we get all of the toolboxes. And in order to run Simulink on Ubuntu 18.04, there was a glib C patch um, that had to be hand applied. So uh, I think what I'll do is, uh, it, this is very timely because I'm, I'm right at the point where I need to move over and, and start using HDL Coder. Um, if Simulink doesn't launch, then then we, things might get uh, exciting. So I'll come to you if all of these updates, uh, you know, somehow uh, made the that particular patch uh, unhappy. And in the notes for this, uh, <laughs> yeah, in the notes for this uh, particular video, I'll put in what I'm talking about. Like I'll link to the to the description from MathWorks about you know here's how to get Simulink to work on. It. Linux on Ubuntu, um, you know. So this is something that we've had in the remote labs for a while. Uh, and in previous attempts to to update app get update, it objected. So if you did, didn't see that and it sailed through, then that's a that either is a big step forward, and that means that everything is fine, and we this patch is in the past because uh, this patch did prevent other glibc things from working on Karapi. It ha it became a special case in our lab. So. Well, that's that's good to know, and we'll we'll figure it out and and adapt and and move forward. So thank you for all of that work. Um, so yeah, over over the past week, we also, from an FPGA perspective, we uh, meaning Paul and I attended the Enclustra FPGA Roadshow, which came to San Diego and Los Angeles, and um, I believe tomorrow, if I remember the schedule correctly, might be in the Bay Area in San Francisco. And Enclustra is a, a FPGA company that does uh, systems on modules. They do cards and uh, lots of development assist board type work. They're, they're launching a US-based uh, um, operations. Uh, their headquarters will be here in San Diego downtown which we thought was an interesting choice because most of the chip and FPGA uh, people are in uh, what's known as Sorrento Valley. So they're they're much further south uh, than, or sorry, much further north than, than uh, downtown San Diego. This uh, workshop turned out to be much more, uh, much more than, than what I was expecting. So it was solid technical presentations and some some really good information about the current SOM, SOC, RFSOC, Xilinx roadmap and cluster roadmap, uh, use cases, uh, customer cases, and uh, summaries of, of kind of what the current state of the art is in FPGA uh, design execution and where the this particular company thinks that they can fit in. So well worth the time and got some good contacts that are already kind of paying off. And I'll be asking these people uh, for some specific kind of help uh, with with how exactly to navigate through some of the tools problems we had. So so all good. Uh, it turns out that we already knew a lot of the people in the community, the FPGA community, especially when it comes to R&D and open source is pretty small. And the all, all the all the interactions were, were very positive. So. That's that's one of the things we did over the past week. All right, am I forgetting anything uh, about what else we did over the past week? Like uh, any other field trips or or anything in the lab, maintenance wise? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I think that was that was our big outside the lab sort of uh, trip. It was uh, it was good. Okay, so what I what I've been up to over the past week is is trying very hard to get uh, a better grip on how to move from MATLAB to Simulink to HDL Coder to VHDL to uh, deployed in the lab for Neptune. Our Neptune is our drone project, uh, so it's a it's a project that does a a, a link a communications link for for drones. Um, so all open source, uh, OFDM based, uh, leveraging pretty hard from from Wi-Fi and and LTE and FG and 5G. Uh, so so very familiar to people that are that are familiar with this particular area. And uh, so I had some success over the past week 
so last week I said, this is what I wanted to do. And my goal was to actually get it all the way to HDL coder. And I think maybe today uh, I might be able to go get, see what batch of errors happen uh, when I try that. Um, but I was able to get some, some good results. So what I did is I got a model for the OFDM, uh, for the specification for, for uh, FlexLink. So that's our open source uh, OFDM specification for, for Neptune. I was able to take that specification, translate it into a MATLAB script, and that script started producing the right answers after I got through educating myself about OFDM. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> you know, this is a great victory for me. So, you know, uh, translating the script into into um, to MATLAB, and then that that is like your your base of operations. So you have something in MATLAB, or it can be Python, it can be C, it can be whatever, but you have to have start somewhere and have something that says, okay, you input equals output, and this is known to be correct based on the specification that you have. So that's kind of the goal for this MATLAB work. And then I said, okay, so we need a Simulink model in order to feed into HDL Coder um, to then convert it to HDL. This is very basic, like the core of it. So, so getting um, competence in in being able to do uh, the the IFFT or IFDT, uh, either either way. But I'm using the IFF, IFFT to go from what you're presented with as the input. And then you're producing a time series, a complex time series that you transmit over the air. So for those of you like me that are used to doing other types of modulations, this is a little bit new um, because you're you're using something like a QAM modulator, you know, QAM, to go from your data, your zeros and ones, to a series of tones, essentially. This is a complex frequency uh, output. And we're used to thinking, well, that's the stuff that you go, goes out over the air. And with OFDM, that's really not the case. You're actually feeding the output of your QAM modulator into uh, an IFFT or an IDFT. And then that time series, that's what your that complex time series is what you're going to transmit. And, um, you know, you have cyclic prefixes, which are how you, how you use those to synchronize to find the the beginning of this massive, complicated, gnarly looking symbol. Uh, so symbols are a little bit different and the the whole framework's a little bit different, but it's got so many advantages. It's really been a, a remarkable journey to kind of come up to this uh, point. The next step is to take the Simulink model that I think works good enough and then uh, run it through HDL Coder and then produce uh, the HDL on, on the other side so that we can review it. These are kind of baby steps because it's just the, you know, it's just the guts. It's really the actual format of the symbol that's fed in, which includes, uh, you know, virtual channels, which I learned all about uh, and all that. that. That stuff comes directly from the MATLAB workspace. So MATLAB's doing the workhorse part there, um, but then, by next week, uh, at a minimum, I'll be able to report back that we've been able to, to make synthesizable HDL code for an open source drone um, transmitter and it, the, 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 that it handles the basics. And then I'll start including more of the functionality as, you know, as much as possible to try to get it into uh, programmable logic. So that's my, that's my report. And um, I, the only roadblocks I have are, you know, I think my own frailties, <laughs> as we all know, we're all imperfect engineers and all that. Uh, but, uh, you know, the only roadblocks are, you know, my confusion. So I don't, I have everything I need at this point. And Leonard Deguez has been fantastic as the lead for Neptune for, for the, for this project. I uh, greatly appreciate it. He's got a couple of other FPGA designers that do not have a lot of time, but are very enthusiastic about the project. So I'm hoping that they will provide feedback when the next batch of stuff is is published. Um, and I'm looking very forward to to demonstrating this next year over the air, maybe DEF CON, Aerospace Village, or someplace like that. Uh, and it being at our Technological Advisory Committee meeting 
which uh, we need to plan so, uh, coming up here soon. So this sort of stuff should should start showing up at our other uh, meets, uh, along with the the work that Ken is doing on the receiver for the big transponder for high for IA. So good stuff. Uh, we still haven't solved the API mismatch problem, but uh, we do have an opportunity to talk with more people coming up at something called IMAP, uh, which is a conference here in San Diego uh, tomorrow. So I'm going to spend part of the day there supporting student STEM outreach and events to get them involved in, in engineering. So uh, some a uh, whole ba big batch of high school students. It'll be great. And I'll take the opportunity to walk around and introduce myself to to folks that are exhibiting. And I'm sure would love to hear from somebody that would really like to be getting their software working better uh, and ask some some questions of anybody that's doing this sort of work, like where, you know, which exact frameworks to solve the API mismatch problem. So that's my that's my plan for next week. That's the roadblocks I have. Um, you got any more time out there or brains, then ship them to me. <laughs> or anybody here, <laughs> I'm sure we could all uh, appreciate uh, being being more uh, more capable and competent in our efforts to, to serve uh, good open source designs. All right, any other questions for the stand-up before we close? All right, thank you everybody so much for your volunteerism. It's deeply appreciated. Uh, we're doing great stuff and ambitious things. Uh, you know, uh, things worth doing are rarely easy, and this is no exception. So, with that, we'll close out this part of the meeting. So, if you need to to take off, please go ahead, and then we'll uh, pause. I'll stop the recording, and then we'll have um, office hours until everybody's uh, said everything that they want to say. <laughs>